Good evening, friends and neighbors. Welcome to the inaugural episode of For the Cognitive Conjecture. I'm your host, Colin Jason. I've been Matthew Colin Glass. Now, it was my volition to have sort of a podcast with a back and forth between myself and my good friend, brother, and the best student, most successful student uh, I've ever taught with correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, colon, Ricardo, colon, Marseille. But it didn't work out for this one exactly. So I'm just going to go ahead by myself and fly solo. And then hopefully uh, you can join me on future episodes. Uh, that was the whole point. That was whole, my whole brainstorm idea of doing it was having him and I, you know, go back and forth about things and share our conjecture regarding certain topics, current events, having to do with correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar, i.e. quantum grammar, domain, things like that. And also to harken back to the, you know, 50s and 60s style of uh, TV programs, you know, where you had Dean Martin, Frank Sinatra, Jerry Lewis, you know, individuals like that, uh, Bob Hope, uh, I don't know, you know, people like that that are, you know, sharing their adult beverages, smoking cigarettes, although I don't, I don't smoke anymore, but just, just like to basically have a BS session about current events and shed some light on it from a quantum grammar point of view, a correct sentence, through a correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar lens, much like if you remember if you've been watching this channel uh, for a few years, you will know that I did a news show for a while called For the Now Space News. And I began a segment on that show called For the uh, Cognitive Conjecture, which is going to be very similar to what I'm doing here. I've decided to take that formula and turn it into an entire podcast. Now, I already have a podcast called For the Quantum Grammar Shoot. It's got well over 100 uh, episodes. This is different. But I'm anxious to get it started, so that's why I'm doing it solo, because now space is limited. And um, Ricardo could not make it tonight, which is cool, you know. Hopefully he'll be in the next one. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at some things, do some comparisons, and just, just talk about a few things, which I think you'll find interesting. And one of those things is an actual court case that Russell J. Gould was involved in, and I think it's 2004. I found a record of it. So we'll take a look at that, too. But first, we're going to take a look at some current events and make a juxtaposition between what news is reported here in the West as compared to what is reported in the East. So first, I want to take a look at this website, which is called TASS, and it's a Russian news agency, okay? Now the first question came into my mind, which is maybe the first question that came into your mind, who owns this? And according to Google, it says, TASS is registered as a federal state unitary enterprise owned by the government of Russia headquartered in Moscow. So there you go. It also has 68 bureaus around the world. <laughs> so it appears to come from where it says it comes from. So let's take a look at some of the headlines here. Novatech plans to deliver its share of Arctic LNG2 projects output to Japan. U.S. asks North Korea to return detained U.S. servicemen to part of the state. Uh, new EU grant to Ukraine means years more of fighting. Main story, military operation in Ukraine. Russian forces wipe out signal center command post of two Ukrainian army brigades. 
European Union extends sanctions against Russia for six months. Putin extends reciprocal measures against sanctions until year-end 2025. UK lifts sanctions on businessman Oleg Tinkoff, Treasury. UK lifts sanctions on businessman Oleg. They must be making a bag off that guy, so that's why they're releasing the sanctions. Okay, Russian abandons Joint Coordination Center following grain deal suspension. Relations between Russia and Latin America immune to outside meddling. Putin to participate online in all BRICS summit sessions. So you see, most of this is about what's going on over there in Ukraine, which, why wouldn't it be? Uh... We got some China in here, of course, because logically, why wouldn't you? The any enemy of my enemy is my friend, right? Wow, there's a lot of China news here. West's focus shifts to repairing weapons provided to Ukraine. Swedish embassy in Baghdad set on fire by protesters against Koran burning. I don't know if they're trying to save the trees or what, what, what they're upset about there. You know, burning books, I guess, would contribute to global warming. So maybe that's what they're mad about. I don't know. U.S. lacks courage to admit that its plans of defeating Russia are failing. <laughs> you know what? I apologize for that. I should not laugh at that stuff. Because... People are dying over there. What I found funny is just the headline itself. It's from a Russian perspective, basically saying what the U.S. lacks or doesn't lack. Like, they lack the courage to admit that its plans of defeating Russia are failing. Well, how would they possibly know that that's what the deal is they wouldn't but you know it's propaganda so what do you expect you get the same thing here really you do uh, Putin calls policy of Western ruling elites erroneous no kidding anyway so we see more China here things like that um, Russian diplomat decries fake news reports about alleged U.S.-Russia talks on Ukraine. All right, so that's about enough of that. This is a Russian news site, okay? Now let's take a look at a U.S. news site, U.S. News and World Report. Now, who owns U.S. News and World Report? The company is owned by U.S. News and World Report, LP, a privately held company with headquarters in Washington, D.C. They use a little bit more subterfuge in my mind, you know, as to what's going on here. It's a, whereas TASS is owned by the Russian government, U.S. News is, own, is owned by a private corporation based in Washington, D.C., which is the hub of the past tense United States government. So you can draw your own conclusions there, but let's look at some of these headlines as compared to the TASS headlines. July's extreme heat to be unrelenting. A Kennedy in the Capitol faces scorn. Tips for resuming student loan payments. June home sales fall 3.3%. Putin grows more isolated. New home construction cools in June. Michigan charges fake electors. Trump receives target letter. Retail sales rise slightly in June. Senate Democrats okay court ethics bill. Top deals. Oh, a lot of business stuff going on here. Europe cools on trans care for minors. Citing insufficient research, European health bodies from Sweden to France are taking a more conservative approach to gender-affirming care for minors. The less said about that, the better. 
How to retire on 500k child labor violations on the rise. As states seek to ease requirements for employing teens, data shows the number of minors involved in child labor violations rose by nearly 300% over seven years. Hmm. Well, I can tell you, friends and neighbors, that when I was 15 years old, I was working a job where I was doing roofing, construction, roofing, during the summer, and uh, getting paid under the table, as they say. Like, you know, when, when I do my work, and at the end of the day, uh, my boss and I would stand on either side of a table, and he would take some greenbacks and put it under the table, and then I'd grab it and bring it out the other side and put it in my pocket. <laughs> So, I mean, I don't, child labor, whatever. I was working like 10, 12 hours a day. But, uh, you know, entrepreneurship, I guess. How to prepare for deflation. Deflation can pose a risk to your financial security. What's the difference between deflation and inflation? DE means no. IN means no. No flate contract. Both of them mean the same damn thing. Maternal death, a stubborn issue in U.S. Proven health benefits of blueberries. No kidding. Something nature provides is healthy. <laughs> Shiver me timbers. Stocks, heat wave, Daily life in Afghanistan. That's interesting. Daily life in Afghanistan brings to mind a very good friend of mine um, who was born in Moscow, but was from Af his family was from Afghanistan. And I remember one time he told me, he said, you know, I would like to go back and visit my country. He said, but your country destroyed it. So there's nothing to go back and visit. Which was profound to me. What is a gap year? So as you can see, there is a huge difference in quality of content on U.S. News and World Report, which is supposed to be a respectable news outlet and TASS. And the best thing I can say from my perspective is that I see a lot of frivolous headlines, like over half are frivolous and don't mean anything as compared to TASS. Uh, if Ricardo was here, we could go back and forth about this. But I'm pretty sure he'd probably agree with me as to what I'm saying here. Uh, so, that that sums it up for this part of the program. I mean... Russia, there's a reason why they are a superpower. There is a reason why Putin, when he walks into a room, no one's laughing at him. No one's giggling. No one's whispering. The guy commands honor, i.e. respect. And then when you see the U.S. president walk into a room... I mean, juxtapose the two, and you tell me. I mean, if, if you do the old gang versus gang thing, and you take this leader, and then you have him fight this leader, who would win in a physical confrontation between Putin and Biden? That's a rhetorical question, folks. Okay, so this is the part that I mentioned earlier. Um, this is an old court case, I think from 2002. Um, notice. No, 
notice a few things about this. So we have a claimant here, Jason Zelmer versus Lane Maids, whoever they are. Okay, there's Vasilis there. But let's take a look at this closer, okay? Because if this is supposed to be a correct sentence structure, communication, partially syntax, grammar document, which we see a flag here, it appears to be 1 by 1.9. We see fee for freight over here is a red fox stamp, gold backed. But then we see a cursive signature. It's not an autograph, it's a signature. And it's in cursive, so it's not really there, is it? And then we have centering for the lodge of this summons is within the district court in the territories of the Wisconsin with the unity states of the world. That is not a correct sentence structure, folks. Because if you read it backwards, even taking out the part of, you know, ignoring the particles of negation and the facts, it would say, with the world of the unity states is with the Wisconsin out the territory of out the district court with the summons by the lodge and that is not correct sentence structure because every sentence must start with a cause it must end with the authority and there are four positionals four of with and by I see within and I see in and I see it ends with of those three things totally negate the mathematical interface and then we have our dangling participle colons here like after Zelmer after Clayman after versus after summons the numbers are not positioned with position lodial fact phrases because again, I, I say this over and over again, ad nauseum. Facts must be positioned with correctness. Are numbers facts? If the answer is yes, then they must be positioned as facts. If the answer is no, then what are they doing there? They shouldn't be dangling, dangling there like pronouns, which is what they are in this context. So for this counterclaim, okay, so first of all, let's take a look at here. This is supposed to be in correct sentence structure, but yet we have Lana space made is space sick in uh, brackets. We have an adjective pronoun, a break in the continuance of the evidence with the comma. Then we have adjective pronoun, adjective, adjective, adjective pronoun, Dane County Circuit Court. So as soon as that happens, regardless of incorrect positionals up here and voidance of mathematical interface, this throws the whole thing into adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun. You can't have both of them on the same paper like that. It's either correct or it's not correct. You can use two different languages if you want to, as long as you give closure to that. But with correct sentence structure, everything must be correct. And this is not. So, outside of all that stuff, this is just interesting to me. Oh, Janice K. Logan. Does that name sound familiar to you, friends and neighbors? Those of you who are quantum grammar historians will recognize that name from the Reno seminars of 2018 when Colin Russell hyphen J. Colin Gould talked about Little Janice, that's her. And he spoke uh, very highly of her. So, again, we have a cursive signature, not an autograph, cursive signature. Cursive here as well. And this looks like RJG initials. Let's zoom in on that. I 
can't really see if that's if it's RJG. I can't see. I don't know if that's who it is. For the copy claim of the date, 2002, January 7, is with the David Wayne Miller law claims by the district court judge. What does that mean? Besides the fact that it's not correct grammar, because of the colon placements, wait, let, let, let me certify that. For the copy claim of the date is with the David Wynn of the Miller with the law claims. No, actually, the positional sequencing is correct. Doggone it, it is correct. We're just missing, <clears throat> we're just missing a couple hyphens there in the date and things like that. So, yeah, cool. Okay, so we have Lodge Date, 2002, Unity States of the World, and District of the Wisconsin, Russell J. Gould. There we go. Cursive signature. Janice also gives a cursive signature. Um, they give U.S. codes. Clerk of the District Court. Uh, Russell is the clerk of the District Court. So up here, clerk. Of, yeah. Okay. So that would be a RJG then. So we here we have a little mini dictionary here with the old dangling participle colon. CC civil claim. USC. United States at the claims. Yeah, see, the same thing. They make the same mistake here for that abbreviation. Article. Vowel in front of a consonant. Or as David says, vowel in front of two consonants. But here we are using it. So, party live birth. Citizen live birth. Vessel live birth. I guess they mean... Uh, Live Life Claimant, but in 2002, who knows what it was called back then. I mean, back then, I think it was called uh, In the Truth Grammar. It wasn't even called Correct Sentence Structure Communication Parsing Syntax Grammar. Uh, and then they give closure to the abbreviations, which at this stage in the game in 2002, I, I don't know if this worked or not. But, I mean, back then there wouldn't have been much issue with it because no one knew about it back then. These people were dictating their terms and conditions. They were just getting rolling with the grammar and hadn't really run it through the ringer, so to speak, as we have now, as people like myself and Colin Raven, Ivan Farad, Evan Tweedy, Colin Efren have done, as well as uh, Colin Ricardo, Colin Marseille, and uh, other individuals as well who have questioned a lot of what these people came up with and uh, let's look at the end part here for this Janice K of the district court judge with this unity states of the world with this knowledge in this port and district court as well as with this claim and this duty for the administration of the truth these claims of these people, persons, citizens, parties, and corporations with this corporation of these duties, with this knowledge for the office, this contract with the good faith by the authority. Dangling participle colon. Not to mention the multiple position loadial fact phrases, position loadial fact phrases in front of the verb, voice the mathematical interface, and then we have the signature rather than autograph. Um, she takes authority over it, but hey, for back then in 2002, well done. I mean, come on. Nobody else is doing this stuff. These were the pioneers. These were the pioneers with the pioneer spirit. <sighs> totally you. Janice Logan. Well done. But the issue is now in 2023 is that 
Colin Russell J. Colin Gould is still writing like this. He has not changed. He has not updated. He has not improved. He has not corrected anything. He still uses all of these same errors that I pointed out to you. And keep in mind, folks, for the handful of errors that I pointed out, there are 10 more handfuls of errors that are on this paper that I didn't mention. So, it's like some people maybe are just stuck in a certain place and they don't want to progress, they don't want to move, they don't want to correct, they don't want to make things better for themselves, they don't want to participate with the humility and say, you know what, a lot of this shit is wrong. If we're going to claim to be some sort of high flute and authority of the grammar, then shouldn't we use correct grammar? If we're commanding other people to stop and correct, shouldn't we first make sure that we're correct? <laughs> to me, it just makes logical sense that someone would do that. But, you know, there's a lot of factors that go into it. So, folks, if you've made it this far, congratulations. Thank you very much. Again, you know, this is, uh, this is supposed to be a joint effort between myself and Ricardo. However, you know, I was hard-pressed with the now space to create content and get content out there. And I wanted to get this thing rolling. I want to get it on the road and get it going. So this episode of For the Cognitive Conjecture is going to be labeled zero. It's going to be counted as zero, the Augero episode. Sort of a test run, trial run. The real deal, the real deal is going to come next, where it is myself and Colin Ricardo Marseille on the same screen, talking about the same stuff, going back and forth about it and sharing our thoughts and visions with you, the viewer. This is just sort of a test run just to get the feet wet, get the ball rolling, because once the ball is rolling, it doesn't take much to keep it rolling if it's successful. Uh, so feel free to give your thoughts in the comments field about what you'd like to see on here, if you'd like the the flow of it, if you like the idea of looking at current events, talking about that, even talking about conspiracy theories from the past or present, no matter how wild or crazy they are, spiritual belief systems, religion, monotheism, polytheism, theism, whatever it is, whatever it is, we, you know, we, we'll talk about it on here, because this is stuff that people talk about every day, so why not? That's why it's called cognitive conjecture which I would be negligent if I didn't give closure to those terms and here they are for the cognitive of this finite mean is with the claim of the domain with the maintenance of the value knowledge and of the contract terms with the function of a trade medium with the certification by the contract parties and in conjecture would be for the conjecture of this finite mean is with the performance of the share, with the guess and speculation of the claimant's lens, with the perception and with the sensation by this claim. So you can get a sense of what cognitive and conjecture mean. Cognitive is a domain. It's the domain of the maintenance of the value, knowledge, and contract terms with the function of a trade medium. And then conjecture would mean it's the guess and speculation of the claimant's lens my lens, whatever lens I'm using. It's my perception and my sensation, and I'm sharing it with you. Because it's all based on cogitation, so. Hopefully you, hopefully you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. And uh, if you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, feel free to study the over 600 videos for free on this YouTube channel. Or, if you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, Contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like, and I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that uh, 
you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the Join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Once again, thank you for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. There are over 500 correct sentence structure videos for here you to study on this channel. My gift to you, my fellow mankind. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.